This polynomial video is over polynomial classification, meaning how do we name or how do we classify each of these polynomials in the first place. Just like you and I each have a first, middle, and a last name, polynomials can also be named in one of two ways. So let's go ahead and see these two ways here. They can either be named by their number of terms or they can be named by their degree. And now we can see why some of this vocabulary is really important. In the last video, we defined what terms were, and terms were the pieces separated by the plus signs, but really we know it to mean the plus and minus signs. Just note that we keep the negatives with them. And degree, we've defined to be the highest exponent in the polynomial. So those two things are going to give us ways to classify our polynomials. So let's start by number of terms. Now depending on the number of terms, that is one way we can name our polynomial. So this might be considered the last name per se. Now we can see that we have some um, names over here. It can be a monomial. It can be a binomial, a trinomial, or we might just give it the general name of polynomial. And really, if you haven't picked up on it yet, you can see that it all goes down to the prefix. So what does the prefix mono, bi, tri, and even polynomial mean? Let's start with maybe the easiest one, a binomial. So if we think of something that has the prefix bi, like a bicycle in it, we know that a bicycle has two tires. So a binomial has two terms in it. So an example of this might be something like 3x squared plus 7. That is a binomial because it has two terms. Moving on to trinomial, like a tricycle has three tires, a trinomial has three terms to it. So an example of that might be like 5x cubed minus 2x plus 14. Um, the first one, mono, maybe you heard this saying, mono e mono, which um, kind of translates into one on one, or mono, the prefix means one. So a mononomial might be something like 3x. Now poly, the prefix poly means many or multiple. So that's why we classify all of these as polynomials, because they can have as little as one term as we see here, or as many terms as it wants. So I've went up to three terms, but we know that a polynomial can have way more than that. So it can have many or it can have multiple terms. Okay, so let's switch over to the degree. Depending upon the degree of the polynomial, that's another way that we can classify these. So the degrees might be the first name in naming a polynomial. And I'm actually going to start with the last two. Those are the most obvious names that go with these. And actually, I might start with the last one. If something is a degree four polynomial, then it is called a quartic polynomial, which makes sense. There's four quarters in a dollar, so it makes sense that a degree four is a quartic polynomial. Going along with that, degree three polynomial is named a cubic polynomial. If we think of a three-dimensional figure, it might be a box or a cube. So those two names go right along with their degree. Degree one and degree two polynomials, they don't actually follow in the same suit. A degree one polynomial is called a linear polynomial. And the reason that it's called a linear polynomial is because that is associated with the graph. All degree one polynomials can be graphed in straight lines, hence linear. Now degree two is probably the most misleading because a degree two polynomial is called a quadratic polynomial. So a lot of people see the prefix quad and thinks that it might be a degree four polynomial, which is completely understandable, but a quadratic polynomial is actually degree two. The last one, a degree zero polynomial, we don't see very often, but we do see every once in a while. It is actually a constant polynomial. And let me give a couple examples to explain that. A linear polynomial might be something like 3x plus 
7, because my highest exponent or highest power is 1. A quadratic polynomial might be like 5x squared minus 9. Our highest exponent is 2. So if I have to think of something that doesn't have a degree or an exponent in it, then it's just going to be a number or a constant in itself, maybe something like negative 6. So if there's no degree, that means there's no variable. And if there's no variable, that means our polynomial is constant which means this classification of a degree zero polynomial is pretty straightforward in itself. Okay, now I've been saying first names and last names, so to say. Well, let's actually put these together. So let me give you an example down here. Let's see if we can name, using both of the names of this example, something like 9x squared plus 2x minus 7. So I can name it by the degree, that's its first name, and I can name it by the number of terms, that's its second name. So my degree of this polynomial is 2, so the first name of this guy is a quadratic. And if I look, this guy has three terms, so that means it is a trinomial. So the official first and last name of this example is a quadratic trinomial. And we can do that with all polynomials. Now, if it goes above degree 4, then we just say it's degree 5. And if it has more terms than 1, 2, 3, then we would just use the default of polynomial. So an example of that might be like 5x to the fifth minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 7. So the name of this guy would be a degree 5 polynomial because it goes above our degree 4 and it goes above our 3 number of terms. So it just has a very generalized name, degree 5 polynomial. So at this point, hopefully when you hear me say these words, in the next few videos, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and even factoring polynomials, you understand what I am talking about.